Now we'll move on to DC testing by selecting the Mega Ohm icon here. Selecting the proper tester configuration. In this case, we're using the Baker DX only. The other option, of course, is the DX with power pack for high voltage testing. Next, we'd like to select the proper temperature correction formula for the insulation under test. In this case, it's a thermal setting insulation. And now I want to establish the, for temperature correction, I'm going to enter a temperature of the winding. In this case, it's 21 degrees Celsius. Done. And if I wanted to include the humidity, I can do it by selecting that icon and then measuring humidity and then entering the value here, which is 23%. Done. Now we'll connect the leads to the motor. All right, so we'll connect the, first we would like to connect the ground lead to the, the motor frame. Um, and then we have leads one, two, and three. We want to connect them to the appropriate motor, motor lead. So lead one to lead one. Lead two. Now ensure that the leads are not touching and that they're uh, away from any ground sources as well. And we're ready to commence our testing. So we're gonna momentarily press the push to test button. And then we're gonna press the lock push to test button and release the push to test button. And now we'll raise the voltage to the desired test voltage. In this case, a 460 volt motor will test at 500 volts. At 500 volts, stop raising, and then press the mega ohm PI button, and that will initiate the test timer, which you'll see ticking down here on the right. You can scale the current range by pressing the I plus to increase the range or I minus to decrease the range to allow you to see the lower levels of leakage current. At this point, we're performing the mega test. Uh, that's our mega ohm test time limit here. Now that the timer has expired for the mega test, it continues into the full PI slash DA. Now we can see the PI test timer ticking down from 10 minutes or 600 seconds. As we're reaching the end of the uh, PI test now, you can see our timer is almost complete. Uh, at three minutes, the DA ratio was populated. And then of course, once we complete the um, full 10 minutes, the PI ratio will be populated. And from there, we're gonna naturally transition into our high potential testing, um, which uh, could either be done as a conventional high pot, where we'd ramp directly to test voltage and hold for one minute, or as I'll demonstrate in a step voltage high pot mode, where we'll incrementally step in 500 volt increments, in this case to 2000 volts, and then we'll hold for the final high pot. Okay, now that the PI test is complete, we'll see PI test complete message in the lower right hand corner. We're ready to proceed on with the high potential test. Do that by just simply increasing the voltage to the desired level. In this case, I'm going to 1000 volts. I'm gonna pause. So having achieved 1,000 volts, in this case I'm doing a step voltage high pot, so I'm going to select step, 
And that's gonna start my step timer. So on the right hand side here, now it says step test, 57 seconds and counting as it's gonna count down to zero. When that step is complete, then I'll proceed to the next step, which would be 1500 volts. And we'll do this, perform the same steps again. Okay, now it says step test complete. I'm gonna ramp to the next step, which would be 1500 volts. Watching the voltage here on the left. Okay. Having achieved 1500 volts, I'll hit the step button again, restarting the step timer. Okay, now the 1500 volt step is complete. I'm going to ramp to 2000 volts, which will be our final high pot test voltage. So I'm going to ramp to 2000. I get to 2000. Having achieved 2000 volts, now instead of step, I'm going to press the DC high pot to record this as my final high pot voltage. And here on the right, we see DC high pot test and the time sticking down from 53, 52, down to zero. Here in the middle, we have the calculated insulation resistance value in mega ohms and the indicated measured leakage current in microamps. As we were ramping, since we were going in small voltage increments, I was using the slow ramp, but you can also select the fast ramp during your ramp to achieve higher voltages more quickly. The rate of voltage change is defined in the user settings. Okay, now that we've uh, achieved uh, 60 seconds in the final step, DC high pot test is complete. To stop the testing, I'll just simply press the lock PTT button and that will stop the test, discharge the winding. Okay, now that testing is complete, before we move on, we wanna make sure we save the data. You do that by pressing the, the file uh, save icon here. But if for some reason you forgot and you just went on to search test, like we'll do now, it will prompt you to save the data. So we'll go ahead and say yes. And again, if I wanna to save to the active folder and record, I can simply hit yes again, and the data is saved.